everybody said and everybody agreed, and I think everybody in local media agreed that Brian Callahan's biggest pro is the staff that he can build. Yep. Welcome into a hot football show. My name is Zach Lyons. Just to make sure we have a, a, a new setup over here. So make sure that I am coming in loud and clear. If we have any audio issues, I'll fix it on our end. But my name is Zach Lyons. Follow me on X at FWordsPod. Stoney Keeley on the other end. Follow him on X at Stoney Keeley. We have Easton Freeze. You follow him on X at Easton Freeze. And then, of course, we got JT. How do you even pronounce your last name? Runky. Runky. What a terrible last name. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Vlad the Tonky is, you know, it's just terrible. Life. Right. R- R- Rake Straw Jr. Uh, I don't think I'm plugged in. So that was what I was a little worried about is that I am coming in a little low, but that's Pause. just going to be how it's going to be. Uh, if you can, if you can at least just hear me, that is fine. Um, if I'm a little low, I apologize to everybody out there. Maybe I'll just switch with the me and JT. We'll just trade off mics. Let's do that. JT. All right, I think you're. I think you have a very sturdy sounding last name. The, I like it. The um, so it's sturdy. Okay. So we're sitting here. We've been doing senior bubble. We got like four sponsors. Okay, four sponsors to go. So sponsored. So we're we are going to start with the Boom Bros. Yeah. So Boomba's Craft Pizza and Tap House is who brings you the Hot Read Podcast, and we love Boomba's because they make great pizza and they have great drinks on tap, and that is what we like to do. Uh, eat great food while we're watching sports. So that is where we do our shows live each week in Spring Hill, three locations in Middle Tennessee, East Nashville, Spring Hill, Murfreesboro. Check out the nearest boom boss to you. Tell them JT and Easton in the Hot Read Podcast sent you. You will not regret it. We have our travel sponsored by Lions Ford in Lewisburg, Tennessee. LionsFord.net. New cars, pre-owned, service, parts. It doesn't matter. Lions Ford in Lewisburg, Tennessee, just 30 minutes south of Franklin. 45 minutes south of Nashville. Make sure that you contact them if you're looking for a new or pre-owned car. They're going to get you the best deal. And, of course, the Kingston Group, BuildKG.com, and Sinkers Beverages in East Nashville. Both are locally owned and operated. BuildKG.com is so fantastic. And all you got to do is give them a call. They will come to you. Look at your house, whatever you need, your remodel, you're building something new. They're going to give you the best price and use the best materials and the best worker, buildkg.com. And, of course, Sinker's Beverages, been around for forever in East Nashville. It's a fantastic liquor store. Go get all your provisions over at East Nashville. They even have some non-alcoholic stuff if you're into that kind of thing. And I believe they're starting to do the CBD drinks as well. That's a We're doing those now. That's a thing. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Now they're saying they still can't hear me. I think he's just messing with me. Well, they, D- please do not mess with Zach. Uh, or no, D good. Sorry, yeah, I read yeah, it wrong. D good. D good. <laughs> that gum it. <laughs> I mean, let's, we got to make sure that we're actually trying to do a show, D good. So if you really can't hear me, let me know. Somebody other than D good. Yeah. Let us know. I mean, for fuck's sake. <laughs> um, Either way, it looks like CBD seltzer. So they obviously he's clearly him. hearing you. D good. Okay. Somebody mods block yeah. him. Get him out of here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to block D good. He may not ever be able to comment on the show he again. Okay. And there we go. Um, other than that, I think we're good to go. I think we covered all the uh, sponsors here and all that kind of stuff. Talk about football. Let's talk about football. Let's talk about Senior Bowl. The Senior Bowl was fantastic. We're all sun kissed by uh, Amon Ra, the Egyptian god of the sun. Mm. Uh, so yeah, if you if you can really get in and see, Easton is actually still wearing sunglasses. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> just just on just the sun time. the sun facing side of my head. I, yeah, I've got a nice little line there. Um, so I want to ask you guys. We're going to start with Stony because okay. I'm going to try and fix something here on this end of the thing. So I'm going to start with you. So you guys okay. buy us time. Okay, we'll vamp. Okay. All right. Here we go. Who, JT can tell you, I'll sit here and talk for 50 minutes and make you all hate me. So. Who made you say, I got to go find that guy's film? Uh, I, I wrote down a couple of names. I did not stick to just one name, as I've been told to do this week. I can't help it. Let me live my life. That's fine. I, there was one guy that stood out, and I haven't seen a lot of people talk about him, but Nelson Caesar, the edge rusher out of Houston, hmm. I really liked his um, 
relentless nature, even when he was overwhelmed by, um, I don't remember which offensive lineman, but just tried to run down the middle on him and, and was stood up and stonewalled pretty well. He still was fighting, keeping his feet moving, trying to get the drive. I think that's an encouraging trait in a guy. I think he's a little twitchy. He threw a couple spin moves out at the uh, the one-on-one drills on Wednesday, I believe. And I have not watched a single snap of the Houston defense. So I'm like, you know what? I'm, I'm watching this kid. He's kind of twitchy. Um, got some fight in him. Got a little bit of dog in him. Like I need to go find his tape as soon as possible. And then on offense, I went with Kingsley Egwukon, the center out of Florida. Dealt with some injuries in 2023, but uh, apparently James Foster told me to go back and watch his game in 2022 against the Tennessee Volunteers. So uh, that was another thing I immediately made note of. I was like, I cannot wait to get back and watch this guy because he's been good all week. I've talked about him on our shows this week. I've written about him. A uh, scrappy guy, really good with his hands, sticks to people, really good uh, fluid mover in that, like you see, like, the feet, the hips, and the the hands all move at the same time in unison, like just really beautiful. He, you know what? Kingsley Egwakon is poetry in motion. So mm. I'm dying to uh, to go back and watch some more of the Florida offense. Easton, what do you what do you have to say about this question? Uh, so the guy that and I largely ended up spending a lot of my time out here uh, watching this receiving group, and one of the guys that I knew about coming in but hadn't watched any of really yet, um, and now is high on my to do list is uh, Devontae Walker out of UNC. Not for a positive reason though. Uh, day one was pretty rough for him. Uh, I during his team's practice on day two yesterday, uh, I watched some of the receivers, but tried to watch some of the uh, the trenches more during that practice. And the little bit that I caught of him in that practice, I noticed he actually made a couple of plays for the first time during the week. And I was like, oh, maybe he's acquitting himself today. We had James Foster on the show last night, and he said, I watched him the entire practice. It wasn't great. Like I charted four drops. And yeah. so that was news to me. And so apparently day two, not very great either. And then today we were like, 30 minutes into his team's practice and you lean to me and you say, I've got like three more drops on Tez Walker. Yeah. Um, it, he's somebody that you, you come in having just looked at um, different big boards and like preliminary reports on who, who are the guys you need to be paying attention in this draft class at the wide receiver position. He's relatively high up on those lists. And so my big takeaway is I've that what I've read doesn't seem to quite translate to what I've seen. Maybe he just, you know, had a bad week. I don't know. I've not watched it yet. For folks that have watched him already, that I've spoken to, like James, clearly, um, not not somebody that's a huge fan of his based on the tape. Um, but I'm going to go into it with an open mind and and see what exactly some of these draft nicks see in him. The reason why he's higher up on those lists because I just wasn't really impressed with what I saw this week. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I'm sure we'll be talking about him a lot more later because I have some things, thoughts on him as well. Um, my guy this week that uh, I really do need to go watch the tape mostly because I don't, as, as we are, we are I'm trying to figure things. Out. We we are passing notes around like we're in high school. It's great. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, <laughs> we are uh, the guy that I really need to go watch this week that I really didn't even know existed was the cornerback from Louisville. Uh, Jarvis Brownlee Jr. And he's a guy that I didn't really see on day one, but man, for from day two and day three, he is the guy. Um, he's the guy that I think maybe had make them made the most noise this week. Right. Um, from watching him on, on day two, just honestly be the best player out there. And I know uh, there was a lot of people who shared the same sentiment that I saw as well. Uh, Teron Davenport was also, I was talking to him about it. Uh, ben Solak also tweeted out that he was, he thought he was also the best player out there on day two. The guy was just absolutely sticking to all the receivers in, in that second group, a group that most people widely considered the better group sticking. Um, they, uh, they really didn't let him get away from him. He is a guy that was really sticking to them and, and batting plays balls away and, and making plays. And I think that of course, because he was just so low on the consensus board, I, I tried to go find him, and he on the consensus board right now was two thirty eight, and I was like, "This Sheesh, that is that's that not going to last." Way too low for a guy not who absolutely last. played like a dog, a D A double G. I, that's how I would I would 
um D A W G or D A double G? Is he oh, a dag or is he a dog? D A W G. There we go. Uh dog, because that's how he plays, and um I'm excited to see his tape. We're barely holding on here. We are. If you can tell, it's been a week of this. I, I think I figured out our brains. mic issues yeah. over here, so hopefully Good. we can figure that out. Uh, but I want to I want to touch on a few of the guys that you guys talked about. Tez Walker, who stayed after practice today to catch some passes. Oh, did he? I thought that was interesting. He did have a good t- toe touch, you know, touchdown grab a couple of different times, but his drops are out of this world. Bad. All day. It's been all week. Every it's day all week. He's, he's had multiple drops. Uh, Egwukan, I just wanted to throw out one word because I got to watch him today for the first time all week because Uh-oh. I got to watch some offensive line. Uh, Don't tell me. I'm offensive line play. Now. No. You For dummy. Ferocious. Ferocious. I like that. I, like I, you know, that. I think yeah. he's absolutely ferocious. I really like what I see. Uh, a guy that made me said, like, I got to go find that guy's film that I haven't watched was Gabe Hall. And he was just an absolute menace, a uh, defensive lineman from uh, Baylor. It was like insane how much that. When he was attacking all the offensive linemen, whether it was at guard, tackle, or center, it didn't matter who they put up there, he was giving them everything they could handle. He's just a monster of a man. I don't know where you slot him in if you're the Tennessee Titans. I mean, right. I think he would do really well opposite of Jeffrey Simmons. Sure. Um, but he is just, he's a did menace. You, did you happen to notice any reps? Or he was just bull rushing guys. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that's my biggest concern with him. It's like he's got the he's got the length and the twitch to be like a, a really good interior pass rusher. But the times I saw him like just line up and and try to bull rush on a guy like Isaiah Adams who can really get his ass down, his hands up, and lower that center of gravity and just not move. Uh, it kind of he kind of struggled to generate a, a push on a guy. And I think that's with his frame. Like if he could add a little more weight, I think he could be stronger in that area. But I'm kind of looking at him like I don't know what to do with this guy, but I I fucking love him. Well, I, I say this that I bet Coach T wishes he had Gabe Hall. Like, well, hey, right I'll, there, I'll drink to because that. I mean that was Lions yeah coach. that was so <laughs> that was so jersey today. It was so fun to watch him, and he was he was. I may even have pictures of him bull rushing. Okay. And pushing guys back, but he was pushing everybody back. It didn't matter Good. what was Good. happening, so especially your boy Adams that you were just talking about. He pushed him back. I'm fairly certain that he did. Okay. Uh, he also took down a first round draft pick, uh, Ethan Driscoll, yeah. with ease. I think the wind blew and the it pushed, blew back. And pushed him back. Oh man, I feel bad for well, the that atmosphere was, is different up there for him, so you can't, yeah. Yeah, you can't fair enough, really fair hold it against him at I, six eight. I, I, that was too mean. I hope Ethan Driscoll's not watching. I didn't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he did after practice. He said, "I got to get yeah. the Boom Boys <laughs> and uh, after I got to listen to the hot football show and see what they think." Yeah. Uh, who had a bad or good? Doesn't matter. But who had a performance? That's going to make you go back and rewatch. Like, I need to do a rewatch to see whether I missed something that was good, something that was bad, that didn't maybe show up on tape, but it showed up at practice. Maybe it was just something that's going to do you with Senior Bowl a flash in the pan, is right. the, or is there something that I had missed previously? Yeah. So I would start with uh, Jacob Cowing. I think he's had, man, I, I really wanted him to come here and steal the show this week. And I don't think he's done that. I think there have been some some issues with contact and working through it. Uh, I think DBs have really been able to to body him and kind of disrupt his his route timing. And uh, that wasn't something that I really noticed a whole lot of on his tape. Um, really crisp route runner, and I think he has had his moments this week where he's snagged the ball out of the air, good hands, that sort of thing. But. I'm watching him this week. He didn't perform as expected, and I kind of want to go back and look for – I don't remember the issues of fighting through contact on the tape, but I want to go back and watch that and see if there's there's more of it because I I do think that the expectations were high for Cowing, and that could be a potential red flag that I might have slipped up on and not not caught before. Well, then we get we didn't get to watch him today because he gets hurt at the very beginning of practice. Well, that's true. And, well, and, he I watched him in the one on one. Yeah, okay, so he morning. did get yeah, some reps in before yeah, he got hurt. Mm-hmm, gotcha. Yeah. Um, the, the answer for me, I, kind of two answers. One is is um, it's not super Titan specific, so I won't spend a ton of time on it. But we were talking about this earlier at today's practice. 
man, the top quarterbacks in this group um, didn't set themselves apart from the crowd like I thought they would. Bo Nix and Michael Penix, I expected to come in here, and they're both on the same team um, with Sam Hartman from Notre Dame, who is a, a, a solid tier or two or three below those guys as a prospect. I expected them to really set themselves apart from him and, and from the other guys out here passing. It's not to say that they were super bad. They had a tough second day, but um, they were just kind of there. Sure. Does that make sense? And, and, yeah. and it, it didn't look all that different from the rest of the riffraff passing um, in a way that, you know, these are guys that are talked about as first, second round guys. Bo Nix, potentially like the fourth quarterback off the board early in the first round is not out of their own possibility. Man, I didn't see that this week. And again, it's yeah. one week. And I think yeah. largely the senior bowl is set up kind of for quarterbacks to not look great just because it's you're playing with a bunch of guys you don't have any communication with. You're, you're like you're it's I don't think it's conducive to a lot of success for the quarterback quarterbacking position in general. So I'll give him some grace in that regard. But that's something that stood out to me. But for the Titans in particular, I'll go back to the receiving position. A guy that I had watched um adjacent to another guy I, I've watched a good bit of, which is Caleb Williams. Man, Brandon Rice, son of Jerry Rice, uh, USC wide receiver. I, he never really flashed to me watching USC tape, watching Caleb Williams throw to him a good bit uh, on film yeah. when I watched him, uh, to me at least. And, and it's seeing him this week, I've been impressed with his physicality, with his ability to use that big body, um, maintain speed, set, you know, get his hips low in and out of breaks. It's been better than I expected to see from him. And it's making me want to go back and give it a, a proper chance. Look at Brendan's tape, not Brendan on other people's tape kind of deal. I feel like I had maybe jumped to conclusions on him a bit. Yeah, I, I did the same thing with him. Uh, I do have an update from Goody who said he was not trying to troll, but yeah, that, I saw that our our microphones, okay, our microphones are cutting out, yeah. apparently. Well, not anymore. I, I don't think they are anymore. Okay, okay. 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 If they are, then that's his internet. Okay. It's, yeah. It's coming in fine. <laughs> okay. Back on the rails. Yes. Then. Back there on we go. The rails. On the rails. Um, my guy this week that my brain is just really in a blender about him now, who I felt really, really good coming in, uh, Xavier Leggett. I think I'm. Yeah. I think I'm just as confused on Xavier Leggett as I am on how to pronounce his last name right now because <laughs> I've heard it four different ways, and there's a yeah. There's a, a new pronunciation pronunciation of it today that I I don't even remember, but I heard someone say it, and I was like, "Who are you talking about?" Um, We're pretty sure it's Leggett. Right, we get the ball. We get the ball. We're gonna roll roll with that I until gonna, he tells yes. us we're wrong. Yeah, Otherwise, we're rolling with that. I'm gonna continue to do that. But man, talk about I a guy. That's what TD said too. Okay, I trust it was. On. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Leger. Leger. <laughs> Leger. Uh, he's a he's a guy, man. That it's so it's so hard because we had this conversation last night um, about him. It seems that everyone right now has an agenda on Xavier Leggett because he just falls right into where. Um, that Titans pick is in the second round right now. And I think a lot of people are trying to put him into this AJ Brown um, box sort of, so to speak that I think really you can see it, but there are also things that just very much concern me uh, about his game. One big thing is that the, he lacks the explosiveness off uh, at the start of the route. And once he gets up to speed, he's one of the best contested catchers in, in the, in college football, but it, it's hard for him to get going, and that's where I, one, have concerns that it may just be a little bit like Traylon all over again, and two, um, that we saw today that it, it may just be nothing because as we saw in this practice, he ends up actually not finishing because he said he's had an ankle injury that's been nagging him all week, which then brings up another concern of, so he's already injury repone. Uh, Injury prone, prone. prone. That's <laughs> <the word. Nailed laughs> it. And, and so that just already does not mix well with the Titans. So he's a guy that I have to go back and, and rethink about what I think uh, about him and if he is really worth that second round uh, pick. Yeah, I agree with you. I think all that is is all valid. And you talked about Brendan Rice, and this is kind of ties into my next question too. Okay of who is the player that you felt deserved more love from the four of us. Mm. And so it kind of, I'm kind of cheating, okay. but I, I was going to cheat anyway. Cause I, if you hadn't talked about Brendan Rice, I was going to talk about both these guys well, anyway. I mean, it's our show. We can is change it, the rules, how we I'm see cheating. Fred. Yeah. So the guy, the guys that are making me want to go back and watch more tape is Brendan Rice and Marshawn Lloyd. Okay. How about that? And, and the reason being is I think I kind of fell into a trap of just watching 
Caleb Williams. It, it's easy <laughs> to do. <laughs> it's easy to do. And I don't. Yeah. And I and I think like it, watching him have to run around and then the play, and you kind of lose everything that happens when he's trying to extend these plays and what he does. But I love Brendan Rice, and every week he did something different that made me think this guy's kind of like the complete package. And obviously he's being coached or has the Jerry Rice Nepo baby blood. I, gonna, I wanted to get that off my chest. Like, is this a safe space? I went into watching him. I feel like I had a negative disposition already because I'm like, don't get crazy just because he's Jerry Rice's son. Yeah. Probably not going to be very good. That's not fair as, as much as it's unfair and to say also, he's going to be good because he's Jerry Rice's son. Like, well, he's his own guy. It's also fair to say, like, did he really show off that he was Jerry Rice's son? Totally. Like, totally. May, you, maybe you expect a little bit more on the film sure. than what you saw, but he's just a totally kind of different wide receiver, I feel like, yeah. a little bit. He, he's built like a thoroughbred horse, mm -hmm. um, but he mossed, um, I believe it was Max Melton, but I'm not entirely sure, but he mossed someone today for a touchdown, and it was fantastic. Yep. He but, got one on um, the Jackson kid from Oregon, too. I don't know if that's what you're referring to. But maybe, he really but he must. It, what, what, what I wanted to talk Jackson about, Powers at least. Johnson, yeah, I saw yeah, that, too. Yeah. He was a the, uh, Austin. The, the touchdown, the, on that touchdown that he mossed the guy. So they practiced this earlier in the day, and when it was just the wide receivers doing the, whatever they're doing, their drills by themselves. And... It's kind of like a almost like a freelance kind of deal where he runs to the left across the back of the end zone and that's not open. And then he immediately comes right back towards the corner of the end zone. Right. And they taught him how to do that. They showed it to him and he put it into practice. And that was something that he has done all week long. So for me, I think uh, Andrew says need an F words pod with Mike to talk about Wilson and Tyke. You're not going to get anything out of Mike that you're not going to get from the four of us in just a like 30 minutes. So Bingo. just be patient. You're going to get, well, let me tell you, we're going to get to the Titans, yes. <laughs> but this is all important stuff too. This all goes into the Tennessee Titans. Um, but to me, Marshawn Lloyd deserves way more love than we gave him credit for. I come back and I look at it and I'm like, I don't think I saw a guy on film that got 7.1 yards per carry. I was very shocked when yeah. I came to when I started looking up some stuff. But I'm going to have to go back because this guy could do it all. I think you likened him to A.J. Dillon. Uh, I don't know if I'm quite there yet, but I think that what he can do is everything that you want your running back to do, right? Like we talked about, don't know which night it was, but it may have been the efforts pod, but we talked about I think that everybody assumes that you need a Derrick Henry-like running back, and we think you need a running back that can do everything that Tajay Spears can do, right. and which is a running back that can run between the tackles, pass, block, and catch, and that is what Marshawn Lloyd does. I love Marshawn Lloyd. He was probably easily the best running back, but he was also the best running back that I feel like no one was talking about. Sure. And that includes not just us, but I feel like there's no national buzz around him right now, and I think that's a guy that... Deserves more love, but also deserves a rewatch. He made several plays this week that got the crowd kind of hype and got the uh, the other players and the coaches on the field hype as well. And it was like it, it would immediately happen and everybody would just forget about Marshawn Lloyd. And every time <laughs> he did that, I felt like I turned to one of you and I was like, why is nobody talking about Marshawn Lloyd this week? And how many and times were at practice did we say... I always forget about Marshawn Lloyd or Marshawn yeah. Lloyd. And then we come back and we don't say anything on our own on our damn shows. shows. Yeah, I know. I, I, <laughs> I wonder I, if it's yeah. a function of just like the, the general consensus on the USC team this year, which was relatively disappointing relative to expectation. Yeah. But Be, being the, the Caleb Williams show and everybody being like, well, it was all Caleb Williams. No, there were some players on that team man. they scored a lot of points like that wasn't all Caleb Williams. Here's 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 what I'm saying, because Andrew says need a between the tackles back to compliment Spears. And we've also been asked to name our Tajay Spears, but I don't think we're really that prepared yet. But Tajay Spears can go between the tackles They're yeah. like this idea. I yep. think everybody is just kind of and this is, I think, the fantasy, the fault of fantasy football. Mm. That people see a smaller running back and think he can't go. Between you don't have tackles to be built like Derek to, to run do it, between the right? tackles. Tony really Pollard, can do, Tony Pollard can yes. do it. Aaron Jones can do it. Yes. Like that's a guy that a lot of people compliment comp, uh, Tajay Spears to. He can do it. We've seen him do it. So you don't need a compliment. I think. I think we're all. I think it's a. It's a. It's like a habit that we all have to break because I even find myself falling back into that habit. So find a guy that can do everything. 
including running between the tackles, just like Tajay Spears can. How, Chris Johnson ran between the tackles a couple yeah. times out there, guys. We watched it. It yeah. happened. How is this for a concept? Just get a running back that's good. Yes. Mm. That's kind of how I feel about coaches, but we'll get to our coaches <laughs> later. Play the good players. Yeah. Hire the good coaches. Exactly. Yes. It's not hard, actually, yeah. if you exactly. think about it. Exactly. Don't overthink it. Um, so who is a player that you felt deserved more love from the three of us or four of us? Uh, safety out of Oregon, Evan Williams, is a name that I jotted down, kind of like Marshawn Lloyd. I jotted his name down every day of practice and then just never mentioned him. <laughs> on our shows or uh, any of the pieces I've written or anything like that. But he's had a really solid week. I, I, he's making plays out there. Uh, really, really good physical guy, like gets in on the coverage and sticks to his guy. There were a couple of times that he got his hand into the throwing window and broke up a pass. He's undercutting routes at the end zone. I mean, really playing with some like savvy that you'd expect a, out of an outside cornerback at the safety position. So he's another guy that I, I feel like deserves some flowers for the week that he's had. And another guy that I, I want to go back and, and watch a little more tape on. Before we even walk, walk out the door this morning, um, I was talking to JT and I said, when we do our show this evening, I don't even know what the format is going to be, but I want us to talk about Patrick Paul tackle out of Houston. Yeah. Somebody that we haven't mentioned on our show so far this week. And um, of the, of the offensive line play that I got to watch. He's a guy that stood out to me a couple of times. You look at his numbers. He's got what you want on the paper, right? On, on paper, 6'7", 333 pounds, uh, 36 and change inch arms. He's a tackle build, big, strong guy. He's a um, mutant. He is. He's the second heaviest guy here and second tallest guy here, I believe. Yeah. Um, so he, he's got the build that you want and he's got the athleticism to go along with it. Uh, and the reason that I think Titans fans should and probably in short order will be having him on their short list of guys to watch is because if the Titans do go somewhere other than the tackle position with their first pick, he's somebody that may be in that second round range around their th 37th pick, whatever, thir mid 30s, wherever they're picking in the second round um, to potentially start to bolster that tackle um, cupboard that's completely empty right now that they're going to have to find some guys sure. in the later rounds. He's sure. a name that I think folks are going to want to keep an eye on if that's the case. Yeah, it was it was so interesting sitting in the stands watching Patrick Paul and then being on the field looking at Patrick Paul. It's like it, the optical illusion of that was crazy. Sure. He's an absolute monster out there. Um, and another guy like Tyler Guyton wasn't too far behind. Those two going up against each other, mirroring each other was a, a, certainly a sight to see. Um, I'm going to take mine here, the guy that I think I want to talk about, um, taking this more as a Titans-centric ap approach here that I think Titans fans could end up seeing uh, be a possibility um, is Talise Fuaga, the the tackle out of Oregon State. I, I, it's pretty known that a lot of people know about him, but I think there is a world, and, and this is someone I, I always look at the draft very um, just from a thousand foot view and still think that anything could happen. And, and if the Titans somehow uh, have their four guys that they think are blue chip guys uh, go before them, I think there's a world in which the Titans trade back to maybe a 10 or 11 and take a guy in Talese Fuaga, who still I think has the upside of a Joe Alt or an Ola Fashanu. And he's a guy that I think um, with how this draft class is right now and the Titans lacking that the meat like picks for the meat of this draft where there are some really good guys that you'll get early day three, it could be a, a real uh, opportunity for them to trade back a couple of picks, grab maybe a third or another fourth and take a guy in Talese who I think has just as much upside as like an Olaf um, or or maybe even a Joe Alt and be able to take some of these meteor guys in the middle rounds telly essay yes i Fuaga. will no nope. we're done I with will. that we're done with that telly essay is more fun just it objectively is. but it's also objectively incorrect so i will cream my britches if they can Whoa. pick up an extra or if they can pick up a third and only slide down a few spots and get fuaga okay i'll, hold, I'll hold you to that we're, we're, we're on we're on pants creaming alert here <laughs> Uh, speaking of, is it being is this being simulcast on Pornhub? Whoo, cheeked out. Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. is, that, is that Logan? Of course, Logan. Logan. Uh, honorable mention to a guy that maybe deserves a little bit more love, and maybe this is just because he we finally saw an inside linebacker actually step up and make plays all damn day today. Yeah, yeah. Jackson, Jackson Sermon. Yeah, and I just want to throw that name out there. He, he he had a very good day today. He was making plays in pass coverage. He was making stops at the line on run plays. He's very feisty, very talkative. Do love some uh, Jackson Sermon. I think I think Cody Schrader cooked his ass a couple of times. 
but he was doing a good job of cutting off his route and the uh, the drills at the end of the practice today. Like he was, he knew where the ball was going to go, and he was there before Cody Schrader was. Um, okay, so biggest disappointments, just real quick. I don't want to, you know, bash anybody, but guys I was excited to come see that did not live up to anything remotely what I had built up in my head, and maybe that's a me problem. But that is Johnny Dixon, the corner out of Penn State, Good who answer. basically. The only time I noticed his number was when someone was catching a ball on him or yeah. he was getting a penalty. Yeah. And Jacob Cowan. Jacob Cowan was a, a massive disappointment. He was going to be my um, my Tajay Spears. Like My mind was made up. Jacob Cowan was my Tajay Spears this year, and I can't say that. And I, I'd be dis very dishonest to say that Jackson Cowan, or Jacob Cowan, like you, told, like you said, is it going to make me go back and watch the tape? No, this is sports media. You need to double, triple, quadruple yeah, just down. Just keep on saying No it. matter what. Don't, don't worry. Don't lying yeah. eyes. <laughs> just keep riding it. It doesn't matter that he got injured. Exactly. He's got a bionic leg. Yep. He is fine. Who cares? Uh, but that's a guy that just was, man, that was so disappointing for, for me. Yeah. Uh, question for you, Zach, before you hand. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm too late. I'm too late. Nope. Um, People keep asking me, like, who's the next Puka Nakua? Who's the next Tajay Spears? And I don't, I don't think people realize, maybe they did, but we had a very strong conviction about both of those players after last year. And I don't want to speak for you, so I'll give you the, the chance to answer it. Do you feel that way about any prospect we've seen here this week? No, I, and maybe I, I, I will when I go through and start doing my top 50 of the Senior Bowl prospects and I start, yeah. I start going through my notes, fleshing out. It doesn't seem like compared to last year we've had a lot of time to flesh out notes it feels like we've been pumping out a lot of a lot of media content, content not a yeah. lot of written content on at least on me i haven't written a damn article since i've been here i've been just doing video content so i haven't really i feel like i may have a conviction because there's a couple of guys i'm kind of like i'm kind of circling around ron flournoy and stuff something like that and i got some big that kind of goes into my big surprises but i don't think i have a big conviction quite yet i have a yeah. sort of answer for that can i jump in real sure, quick I, go for it a, a guy that we we haven't mentioned once during this show and i think he might be be might be might be being yeah that be being that's right <laughs> be being look i just had an aneurysm might be being looked <laughs> over a little bit this week because of the fact that he was just really solid every single day um my opinion of roman wilson receiver out of michigan has changed I was already interested coming in to watch him because he's coming from a, a system where they just don't throw the ball a whole lot, especially in big games. You know, the quarterback situation up there, they're throwing the ball for like 147 total yards against Penn State. What are you supposed to do with that from an evaluation standpoint? Um, he, he was really good all week. Uh, he looks like a guy that's going to translate to the NFL pretty quickly. And I think a team's going to be really happy with him in the middle rounds. Um, and I, I, I just, it, it further, I'm, I'm further convicted that I don't know what to make of the Michigan quarterback, whose name is completely escaping me right JJ now. McCarthy. JJ McCarthy. I still have no idea what to make of him as an NFL prospect, but with the talent around him, and there was a ton of it. I, th I think you might get some guys out of that team that get to the NFL and some surprise some people when they're playing with different talent around them. If that makes sense, my my it may um, my biggest worry is that my biggest conviction is still a running back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Biggest surprise. Yeah. Okay. Disappointments. Disappointments. I'm gonna go with uh, Leatu Latu. Uh, and really, again, I I don't want to say that he's been bad this week, but the way I put it before was that he was a guy that was expected to come down here and put on a fireworks show. I don't really feel like he's put on that much of a fireworks show. I'm going to go with uh, Jordan Morgan, another guy that, you know, kind of a fringe tackle guard. The measurements came out. You were disappointed and, before you got here, unfortunately, yeah. on the way. <laughs> yeah, in the car, uh, you know, five minutes from the uh, from the Airbnb, we got the news. Um, the measurements come in. It's really discouraging for, for those of us that, you know, thought a second round left tackle might be in play, but then also in the practices, which Zach, I, I didn't get to watch the offensive lineman today. You said that uh, Jordan Morgan had a bit of a bounce back today, but I, I kind of felt like it was too little too late for the week that he's already had. And um, I would also say that the quarterbacks as a whole have been pretty underwhelming this week as well. Uh, skip me to JT because I forgot this question in all honesty. And I've already said a bunch of guys that I find disappointing. So I'm going to find another one. Just okay. A second. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, not to beat down on the guy, but I mean, 
Devontae Walker was supposed to be that guy that was in that first answer. that that first uh, yeah. group there that was really high. I mean, consensus boards um, really had him around a t- borderline first round pick right now in a lot of mock. Had brother, they still do. And that's I don't just, know why, but they very, do. It's very crazy to me. And I, I last night James on our show said something that I thought was very very. Uh, very strong and it was that he has a fourth round grade on Devontae walker and after even after today i said i see it like i i it's something that i would be if i was a gm i would be scared to put my my draft stock into him uh this upcoming season now maybe with a little bit more of the tape i i don't know there's also the conversation of did, is Drake May an element of his game that that kind of elevates that Drake May merchant <laughs> Tez Walker? I think the Tez Walker tape will actually make your opinion of him lower. A oh, little oh bit. good, okay. awesome. It's yeah. like the inverse. What he needed was like he the the tape is questionable. He needed to come here and have a great week, and it's the exact opposite. Mm. Yes, I I, w- I would agree with you on that one, and also yeah, with Johnny Dixon, I think as well was a guy that I thought would be in play for the Titans, and then. They're, they're like in the later rounds. And then there were people that were even like maybe 50 to 60 spots on the consensus big board that lower than where Johnny Dixon was that absolutely played 10 times better than him. So he's a guy that I think I like the tape, but when you put him up against better competition, probably this week than, than he's had, he really crumbled under pressure. You got your guy, Easton. Well, if yeah, not, we can move on. No, I, I have a pseudo answer to this question. Cause again, I, I've already mentioned a number of things I was disappointed by. And I, I'm a, I'm a positive guy. I want to be positive. Um, one th- not a guy that I was disappointed in, but a thing that I was disappointed in. You, know, you walk in the first day and you see Johnny Wilson, it, all of them, which is there's a whole lot of them. Yeah. Um, and, and he's a guy that's being talked about as like people jokingly saying he might he's probably the best tight end here, even though he's a receiver. Um, I wanted to see him like get some practice as a tight end with the tight ends in this group and see what he because a lot of folks projecting this guy huge i don't know his number like six 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 seven um big body can clearly that frame hold a, a good bit more weight if and when he joins an nfl team and they go ahead and transfer him full time to the tight end position which a lot of folks believe that's what's ultimately going to happen i, I kind of wanted to see a little bit out of that out here and we just didn't so that was a disappointment for me i'm curious about that because the scouts the coaches the personnel people that are here watching have a large say in like where guys are playing. And it kind of makes me think like if the NFL viewed him as a tight end, wouldn't they have gotten him reps at tight end this week? Well, and ultimately I'm sure it's his decision. And if he's wanting to fight for it, then it may be ill-advised, but, but you're, you're, you're hundred percent right. I would, I would, that's the one question I'd kill to ask whoever's in charge here. Hey, Jim, Mr. Jim Nagy. What what happened there, right? Yeah, exactly. I think it's a fair question. Sure. Uh, biggest surprise, and Logan Grady actually brings up Jamari Thrash. And for me, I think hey. Jamari Thrash is the biggest surprise. He is a guy who can get open at the next level. He is a guy that even got physical in the end zone to get touchdowns, and he climbed the ladder over some guys that are taller than him. Uh, he, and that was in short yardage situations. But the very first day, he the very first pass going his way was a deep ball, and his deep ball tracking was the first note I wrote for the American team that day Mm -hmm. was that. And that guy (laughs) catches with his hands. I think the other guy that I would be surprised, that I was surprised at, was uh, Marcus Rosamie Jacksaint. But I'm gonna let TD when you, if you subscribe to Stack in the Inbox, he's gonna talk about Marcus. So I'm gonna let TD, who is smarter than me, talk about uh, what he loved out of Marcus uh, Rosemary Rosemary Jackson. I always want to say Rosemary. So do I. I'm going to all draft. Yeah, along, I'm sure. but I love Jamari Thrash, and I think he helped. I don't know where he was in mock drafts or consensus big board. I know he's in day three, but I think that's a guy that kind of is like we all kind of assumed at one point, Jaden Reed, day three guy, and he went in the second round. Like I could see some scouts, depending on his testing, being like, okay, Jamari Thrash. That's a dude. Mm. He's got that Jaden Reed to him. We can give him some end rounds. We can use him deep. We can use him outside, which they did a lot of. Was he was an outside guy? He wasn't a slot guy. Like unlike our guy Malachi Corley, who was used in the slot, who is much bigger than Jamari. So I like what I saw out of Jamari, and he's actually not only the biggest surprise, but I would say he's a guy that I'm going to go watch more film of. Yeah, uh, two things to pile on that eval of Thrash. Two things that he did this week that really impressed me. 
making some really impressive hands catches away from his body down the field mm. and then separating in a phone booth. He and Carlton Johnson had some really good battles this week in the end zone. And I think both guys won their fair share of, of the reps, but thrash particularly being able to get down the field and then separate when the ball's coming to him was really particularly impressive. I think, you know, Jamari Thrash for me might be on that Ty J Spears Puka Nakua watch. I'm not I'm 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 sitting on it, but I'm not I'm not ready to uh to say it officially. I, I do want to just real quick just jump back in on Johnny Wilson because me and Johnny Wilson have had an interesting senior bowl together in which Oh um, Ooh, what's I, going on? Well what? I may or may not have, you know, we, him? no, I, <laughs> me and Easton were talking about this last night. And as D good says, he says, when he asked me, uh, if, if he was more of a tight end or wide receiver, I said that I, so far this week, he looked, um, he looked pretty much like a wide receiver. Like I, I liked yeah. what he was doing. We talked yeah. with James last night that even if he is drafted, it's, it's pretty probable that a team would try him out at tight end. But then, then again, He's played wide receiver like most of his time there. Um, and it's hard to when when you have to get a guy guy up on the line like that, that's gonna be a whole another development process for him. But real quick to to say what I was gonna say on Johnny Wilson and what D Good was alluding to. Um it seemed like America had kind of gotten over the FSU being snubbed for the playoffs kind of thing. And then inadvertently, I think I may have lit the match that started an entire <laughs> new like revolution over it mm -hmm. because on the, on the video that I got of Johnny Wilson, he happened to absolutely cook a Georgia corner. That Ooh, to be clear, something that happened okay. all week, the Georgia DBs tough scene. It tough did, scene, but scene. yeah, me and him have had an interesting senior bowl and I, I, I FSU fans, I'm sorry for re inadvertently reopening that wound. Think, oh, what do we think? Be surprised. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, for me, uh, we've talked about how good Roman Wilson has been. Charles Turner the third has been a pleasant surprise at center this week, and center is a position that I think the Titans could be looking to uh, do a little value shopping in the draft. Uh, also, tight end Brevin Span Ford out of Minnesota got length, got soft hands. Good ability to break. I don't. I don't know that we saw that with the Minnesota Golden Gophers tape, but he's been a pleasant surprise this week. Uh, another guy for me that uh, I've not really put this together until just now, but I guess another person that I was expecting to be underwhelmed because of outsized Nepo baby expectations. Luke McCaffrey, pleasant surprise for me this week. Oh, yeah. uh, wide receiver I'm out of Rice. Rice, Rice right? Yeah. Um, obviously, brother Christian McCaffrey about to play in the Super Bowl. Decent genetics on guys like that, and he can play football, man. Um, he's like a just a, a lengthier, less thick version of his brother. You, you can tell there's that quick twitch, elite athletic ability, um, and, and he's got decent separation, decent size. I think that he's going to be a, a nice, not to go crazy on him, he's going to be a, you know, a nice flyer for a team in the later rounds, but he's absolutely going to be somebody that goes higher than I think a lot of folks are expecting. Yeah, my biggest surprise this week uh, was a guy I, I didn't even notice until day two because he kind of was invisible on day one, but day two and three was really starting to punch above his weight, I think, in, in a kind of sort of cornerback and secondary class that had some heavy hitters. A guy who kind of remains consistent on day two and day three was Max Melton out of Rutgers, who I think could be a a round four guy that the Titans really look at, um, especially playing in the slot today. Like he was not letting Luke McCaffrey get open. He was staying with him. And if you saw Luke McCaffrey out there today, he was so shifty and being able to stay with him on his routes, I thought was really surprising to me. Got to talk to him a little bit. He actually was converted from a uh, wide receiver into a corner uh, slash safety kind of thing there. So really interesting. He plays with a lot of speed and still has some physicality to his game too. So he was a big surprise for me. I like it. So biggest takeaways of the week. So like one overarching thought that you came back with, like the inside linebackers all suck. But um, I think my biggest takeaway is, is going to play off what you just said about Max Melton, but it's going to include, you know, guys like Cam Hart, Chris Abrams, Drain, um, Andrew, there, Phillips. Uh, Andrew Phillips. There were a lot of good corners in this class that really they may not get into the third or second round. But if you're the Tennessee Titans mm. and you've got Denard Wilson, you got guys in this class 
in the fourth round that can be day one starters and be good day one starters. Sure. And to me, that was my biggest takeaway for this whole week. Yeah, my biggest takeaway, it, it's the exact same thing. It's This is a very deep crop of day three talent, and it's beyond the cornerback position. Like I, you, you come into the Senior Bowl week, and you're kind of hoping like some of these guys that are projected to, to be day three can have a good enough week that they start creeping up to the, to the uh, upper echelon of their position group. I would say it's the same for probably wide receiver and offensive tackle as well, where we've got some some really good prospects at the top. I don't think anybody this week climbed up to meet them. I think they're still firmly in that day three, maybe fringe day two status. Mm. But what I think that was established this week was that there are a lot of these day three guys that look like they're going to be quality contributors at the next level. I mean, it's been specifically the defensive back group. Like you said, it's really, really, really deep. Well, we have proof that we didn't share these answers uh, that we talked about the questions <laughs> ahead of time because it's largely the same thing for me. Um, but it feels like you kind of expanded on what Zach said. I'm going to zoom out even further. The biggest takeaway for me was that the national narrative on the, the back end of this draft class, I think, was really overblown. Uh, I think it is still really overblown. You hear a lot. Uh, as people are starting to get into their draft talk about how, man, NIL in college, it's changing the landscape. It's ruining the depth of the draft. There were only blah, 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 however many um, juniors uh, that, that uh, declared for the draft, which is a, a number much lower than we've seen in recent years. It's going to be largely seniors and super seniors and all these things that on paper, I understand where folks are saying, man, you know, players going back, making money in college, staying in college, um, trying to improve their draft stock and all of those things. I saw a lot of guys out here this week that are going to be day three guys and are going to be quality draft picks. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I just think that that narrative was overblown. It's something that is less the, the drafts depth is ruined and more the depth just is different this year. That doesn't mean the actual talent isn't there. I think it absolutely is. I think a lot of it was down here in mobile. Can I say something? Yeah. But speaking on depth, I don't think the wide receiver depth is as good as what everybody makes it out to be. Interesting. Hmm. And then something I'm cooking. Okay. Okay. He's, 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 he's cooking, cooking it up. He's in the lab. Uh, my the lab. my big takeaway of of the week, and this might get me kicked off of this table, is don't let the two guys on the end brainwash you into thinking that Lad McConkey is not an absolute. <laughs> that's that's what I'm going to say. Wait, are y'all anti Lad McConkey? Have I missed this? What's going I'm, on? I'm anti Lad McConkey hype. Yeah, I, I think the hype around it is, is it, a little is bit it, different. Is it the injury risk? Like, what are you? Well, first off, about? there's the injury risk. I'm not concerned about technically the prospect. I think that everybody, and we talk about this with TD. I think everybody overhypes one v ones, and TD agrees. He's a one v one that, that's him, a little bit. Yeah, yeah and so, game. but then you saw today that if a safety's on him, oh right. man, he could break his ankle because safety's sure. lined up. But when Chris Abrams drains on him yeah. and getting physical, or when your boy JBL that we talked about is getting physical, he ain't really doing much. Gotcha. So, okay. And I, I think that's it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that he's not going to be good, right? Because you can have a Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup kind of get a coach that can do that sure. yeah. and find ways to move him around to get favorable matchups. But he's definitely going to be a guy that's dependent upon the matchup across the way. Gotcha. I and just, health. I just want people to hide their boners. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Just you, you want to bring Look at this thing. You want to bring you want to bring <laughs> Kuth back to America. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Okay, guys, we got to talk about some Titans. The I think Titans we've made people I think we we've here. made people yeah. uh wait long enough and so I w I want to say I am really impressed with Denard Wilson. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I think everybody is sharing like 10,000 interviews right now. You could go you could throw a rock into et Titans X right now and not and find like a million clips of Denard Wilson interviews. Denard Wilson is a genius. Denard Wilson is that he's the next great thing. And I, I'm listen, I'm super hyped over some Denard Wilson. We also need to make sure that we do not overhype everything that's going to happen because this, this roster is devoid of talent at the moment. Yes. So we got to make sure that I, and cause I keep telling people this, set your expectations properly for, for this could be, 2019 bingles before it's 2021 bingles yep. so just everybody just set your expectations properly marathon not but a denard wilson fantastic hire i i do not care that he has never called plays because this guy has experience dating back to college as a positional coach he has been around and 
he was he should have been the Eagles defensive coordinator last year, and they fucked up. And look at him now; they've regretted it. You know they're getting Vic, Vic, they got a nice consolation prize of Vic Fangio, but they may have been able to stay in the playoffs if they would have gone ahead and promoted Denard Wilson. I just love the production, the work you've seen out of his position group in Baltimore, specifically this season. I mean, the way that Kyle Hamilton has played, but even like getting results out of some of these guys. Geno Stone's a great example. Geno Stone, I'm glad you said it because I can't think of a single one of their names right now. But well, well, we are, learn we are name the, fried. <laughs> you're going to learn them soon because I've been reliably informed the Titans are going to actually import their entire secondary. The whole unit. For, the that's whole what unit. They, that's what I read. So. Can they get Patrick Queen too? Apparently, apparently <laughs> he's included, so okay. we'll see. All right, I'm in. But yeah, but he's done a great job with Geno Stone, who's a seventh round safety, who was tied mm. for second in the interceptions in the NFL, second most interceptions Crazy. last year. And he and he, the stuff that he's done with Cha Chauncey Gardner Johnson, I know a lot of people don't like him for whatever reason. I think it's an attitude thing. But yeah, well, like Aaron Glenn said, you want a guy with attitude. You you want the dog bark. You want the dog biting when he comes out the womb. Yep. Yep. And that's what Gardner Johnson is. You want that. You, you like that phrase? No, I don't know why. I just pictured a <laughs> human woman birthing a dog <laughs> okay. in that scenario. Well, that's, my... well, that's probably how it happens. Uh, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, but to me, and I and I think Derek... Is the put, dog in the guy or is the guy the dog? I, I, I uh, thought we were on the same page yeah. about this football metaphor. Are you a dog because you have dog... He got that dog in him or you are the dog? You, it, the, he wants a dog. Is it two different, He's saying a dog. Two, is it two different things? I don't know. I think okay. he's saying he's calling him a dog. So we need the scientists. A dog. We need the scientists, need the scientists to, get on this. to answer it. We okay. can break this all down at the yeah. bar later. Okay. Uh, but I think Derek, and this kind of goes into the whole Tyke Tolbert thing too. They're building something great, and I'm here for it no matter how long it takes. Trust in Ranahan. And so Tyke Tolbert is a guy that has loads of experience, very well respected. TD again broke him down and talked about it like. 21 years. Anquan Bolden, that right? rookie Anquan Bolden. Am I making that up? Yeah. 21 years? Yeah, something like that. Anquan Bolden, okay. Yeah. So Anquan Bolden, rookie. Good player. Him. Yep. He developed Anquan Bolden rookie year, led the league in the NFL, led the NFL as a rookie in receptions that year. I like that. Uh, Lee Evans is another guy that people probably just don't think about, but Lee Evans, Lee Evans is, is good, one, some, yeah, Lee Evans is good. Tyke Tolbert. Uh, DJ Moore, we, who was already good, got even better. 1,400 yards, yeah. passes from Justin Fields. Yeah. That's something. Um, you talk about his time in Denver with Demarius Thomas and what he was able to do with Demarius Thomas and all that kind of stuff. And in fact, what led to Tyke Tolbert, I, I figured Tyke Tolbert was going to be the wide receiver coach. When I saw that the Bears let him go, right. I was like, okay, he's going to be the wide receiver coach. He chose the Tennessee Titans over two other uh, teams, unnamed teams. That says a lot about... Brian Callahan's ability to build a staff, which, which is what we have always said, right? Thank you. And so, to me, in in relation the to staff that, he struggled to put together, right? The yeah, the staff that he's struggling, the Titans are, and they don't pay anybody either, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the staff that they are building, like if if everybody said and everybody agreed, and I think everybody in local media agreed that Brian Callahan's biggest pro is the staff that he can build. Yep. So I see a lot of people like, man, I'd really like to get, you know, Eric Studisville because then that would really, you know, you know, bridge the gap for experience. Somebody with experience, right. And and I get it. Like, I'm not really saying that's a bad take. Just hire a good coach. You can hire a good coach with experience. You can hire a good, good coach without experience. Sure. Uh, but if you can't be scared of every hire that he makes, if you're a guy that said he can assemble the best step, have faith until he tells us otherwise or shows us otherwise with these with these hires. Maybe Nick Holes, for example, is not good. OK, we don't know what he is uh, other than what we saw in a Wikipedia article. Right. Yeah. Like none of us really know what he yeah. does behind the scenes. He could be the next Bobby Sloak for all we know, because he kind of has a similar background and offensive analyst and then gets moved over here and then has moved over here and has never been an offense coordinator. He's not going to call plays. So to me. If you are a believer in Brian Callahan's ability to build a staff, this round one, year one, you are you need to trust that he knows what he's doing until he proves otherwise. Right, and I, I I found this fascinating. I looked it up. It's true. I verified this. Everybody in the league who is a coach, who is a quality known commodity, 
actually had no experience when they first started doing that. So it's it's actually a requirement um, to become one of those guys that is good at your job to be given a chance to do that job first. I, we were talking before the show. In all seriousness, is it nothing that these that if you if you put together a staff, which again is far from complete, that has very little experience doing the actual job that they are now contracted to do, is it nothing? No, of course it's something, but it's something that is going to be largely blown out of proportion because of the fact that you're overlooking quality experience in the NFL, quality uh, uh, diversity of experience, doing different things, proving yourself in and around folks, doing the thing that you are now doing. Like All of that plays into you being capable of, in the eyes of the, the folks who are making these hires, who fans seem to have significant trust in, making the decision based on the interview process, based on knowing these guys, I have faith in this guy to do this job. Like you said, trust in them to give them that opportunity and it not backfire. Will they all be perfect tires? Of course not. You're going to, you're going to miss. That's the nature of the, of the exercise. But uh, I really don't think it, you know, if it's nothing, something, everything scale, it's very firmly on the low end of something. Yeah, I would agree. And just to kind of put a bow on that, I, I want to take it at a different little bit of a different route and just look at it as a whole. And I think this is my favorite thing about Brian Callahan in what he said in his opening press conference is that he's doing a lot of the things that have he's learning from his mistakes, the, the selfish, this selflessness to be, these are the things that really uh, have hindered me as a coach and hindered my teams in the past. I'm going out and getting guys who are good at what I'm not good at and getting them in the building. And I think that's uh, experience or not like, getting those guys in there to diversify the ideas and not create such a, such a culture of group think is the biggest thing I think that I'm like, and that I'm seeing and liking out of Brian Callahan right now. I'm anti group think as long as everybody agrees with what I have to say. There you go. The there we go. That's, yeah. that's how you do it. Uh, closing uh, thoughts on where the Titans hiring process is right now. Obviously they've still got lots and lots of staff to, to fill, but, do you guys find it weird that they're hiring a position coach before having an offensive coordinator? Does it really matter for the wide receiver to, because the offensive scheme and the offensive system is Callahan's. Right. So where are you guys at on final thoughts of how that goes? But also is that weird? Cause that is a question we, that we have. I don't think it's weird because I borrow a phrase from you. Just get good coaches. And Brian Callahan said in the press conference last week, they're going to take their time with this. They're not going to rush. And I think, like you said, the most important thing is that this is going to be Brian Callahan's scheme. And guess what? Brian Callahan's in place. You got it. So I think philosophically speaking, you're, you're probably going to hire guys that align with what you want to do regardless. So I, I'm not too worried about it. Um, like I told you yesterday at Wenzel's, the longer it goes on, the longer it's going to go on. That's a great analysis. That is. Thank you. Yeah. That's really good. Thank, thank you. you. I like that. Yeah. Uh, um. Thank you, Booger. We appreciate that. Uh, so here, here's the thing that I find interesting. Um, it, it would be tinfoil hatty to say that this is definitely the case, but I, it makes me wonder. And I, I actually saw this, this thought for the first time from um, Jake on ball, which is an account on, on Titans Twitter um, that I, I think that there is some validity to this thinking. There's so much evidence when you look at Callahan's track record, when you listen to the things that he's talked about from a coaching philosophy and approach standpoint that indicate he is obviously going to be calling the plays, but also when it comes to the passing game, like that's his jam. You know, he's an offensive guy who is a passing game quarterback, wide receiver guru. That's, that's his area of expertise. You go and you hire your guy that you want to be the wide receiver coach you don't yet have an offensive coordinator. It makes me wonder if maybe he's going to, with the offensive coordinator role, go the route of a guy who's more run game oriented, somebody that isn't necessarily um, super dependent on or worried about who their wide receiver coach is because they're going to kind of uh, uh, collaborate on, on the offense from a passing guys, running guys. Let's, let's marry those two things and have a balanced offense. Again, Maybe that's looking too far into it, but it does make me wonder. And and you can you can disagree and think that's crazy, but I I think that there may be some validity to it. I don't know. I think 
I'm going to go like the direct opposite of that Great. and say awesome. that <laughs> I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying sure. there's also a reality where, as it was reported, he chose the Titans over two other coaches and just a hot commodity. It's, it's a hot commodity. Sure. So if you want that commodity, who cares if you don't get your offensive coordinator, get him in the building and work around that. That's like, pretty I think smart. That's, I actually, I think that's probably more likely. Than I said, <laughs> like, if, if you like the guy, get him and sure. then worry about Boom. it later. Like I think a, as this business, there are so many positions, like make sure you get your guys. Yeah, I agree. And here, here's something, um, uh, Steve Morton, on uh, a Titans Homer on Twitter. And Robert Greenlaw have put this up on Twitter as well. well you can't believe and, it. And so I'm going to read uh, Greenlaw's tweet, but this is backed up in uh, other tweets by okay. Morton. It's, but it's I'm going to read just more than just yeah. wrong. I don't like that guy. So uh, the end the season podcast by Peter Schrager. Yep. Brian Callahan was on it last year mm -hmm. and talking a lot. We've seen a few clips from that podcast, but uh, I'm not going to call him Callie. We're not calling him Callie. We're it's BC or Callahan. I think Callie's a is that the rule we're not allowed to call him Kelly, i would appreciate it not in my presence okay. um okay. i'd appreciate everybody not, be grown not, men not in your and, household yeah well he's a grown man and he's asked specifically to be referred to as Kelly. no he didn't did, he didn't ask to be referred to Kelly. someone at, asked him i was at the press conference and he said didn't yes some, and it, it, someone the, asked right someone, someone asked led him. the dog to water well but yeah but then not on the microphone callahan said yes please call me Kelly. Oh, so, wow. I, I I saw Orlando Brown call him BC, I'm so I don't that. know where the Cali the stuff Bryce, really Brian came Callahan, from. Right, yeah, but I like absolutely. I like BC better. Okay. Uh, but Callahan li lists Tyke Tolbert, Eric Studisville, David Shaw, among others, and, and him Gase and Clancy Barone, as guys that helped shape him as a coach. Right. And basically, he also mentioned like Tolbert is one of the great coaches they had in Denver back in the day. We, we talked about that back then. And how basically he helped shape him as a coach. So that's like he got the guy that he wanted, but also there's a reason why Tolbert wanted to work with Brian Callahan because he respects Brian Callahan. And that was the whole point of hiring Brian Callahan because Bingo. he could build a respectable staff. And according to Emory Hunt, he got the best wide receiver coach in the game. And he's strong. He, yeah. Yeah. And and let's be honest, it won't be hard. It may be hard for him to develop some of the guys they have currently on the roster, but sure. bringing in guys that he wants to work with or he recognizes the talent matters. But he's also better than Rob Moore. I think we can all agree that he's better than Rob Moore. Sure. Okay. Fine. Yeah. That will do it for us. This it? has been a football show. Oh we oh we're God. just a little over yeah. one hour. We have nothing, to, no time for you. We're, in all fact, right, one sentence. Here, here's what I'm going to say. <laughs> Unofficial Titans podcast will have the four of us on it directly after the show. It's not going to okay. be live, but we're going to record. What is your one thing? If you lose a rep, swing a helmet. There you go. <laughs> there good, you go. Good advice. Uh, uh, Traylon Burks breakout season incoming. Please save your money and do not and do not bet on that. Uh, I, I don't know. That's what that's what I got away from this podcast. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is um, Burks season finally. Uh, but I will say this: uh, this has been a pleasure. Unofficial Titans podcast. Uh, we're going to be doing our Senior Bowl draft, and we're going to rope these two uh, jabronis in on that. Jabronis. And then uh, Hot Read podcast. Talk about what you guys got coming up this week, but also plug your sponsor this week we have no more things we did three shows <laughs> uh they're great you should listen to them they got better as we went um throughout the week and i think you'll like the senior bowl coverage we'll be back to covering the offseason and the titans things and coaching searches and all of that good stuff next week with i think we're going to keep doing two episodes a week on on tuesdays and on thursdays live so check it out uh you know of course football show we've done uh the one on monday we have also been doing stuff at 8 30 from monday or from tuesday through thursday previewing the senior bowl we've had our reviews of senior bowl over at stacking the inbox.com so make sure you guys subscribe to that uh i think we're gonna be taking a break tomorrow going to recharge and get some stuff prepared because I got a lot of coaching articles to write. I got a top 50. You got film to break down. So we got a lot coming on, but we will have content over at stackingtheinbox.com tonight for Teron Davenport's uh, interview with Stoney. And then we're also going to have something on uh, tomorrow morning as well. Um, also, our sponsors before we get out of here. Hey, the Kingston group. You've already, did y'all talk to you plug boom? Boom boss, boss. I kind of check them out. Okay. Great restaurant. You'll like it. Oh, yeah, you did. You said that. Um, the Kingston Group build kg.com for all your home remodeling needs. Locally owned, locally operated. Uh, they use the best materials and the best workers to get everything done, and they will give you the best price. They'll give you some estimates. So just give them a call. If you ever have anything, just call them. That's all you have to do. You don't have to sign any papers or anything unless you fully agree. 
Then also, we're in the Titans' new uniforms. That's kind of feels very unsubstantiated I'll at this point. Believe it when I see it. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really going to get into that. But uh, Sinker's Beverages, uh, East Nashville, go over there. Ward winning back to back to back. I think. I think they're like they're the Ric Flair of liquor stores. They Strong just have tank. all these uh, awards mounted on the shelves. Uh, go there. They can get you all kinds of stuff. Seltzers liquor wine it doesn't matter they have everything that you need there go to blue uh i was about to say bluegrass go to sinkers beverages hey. the sister store to bluegrass beverages and also lions ford lions ford.net lions ford to lewisburg tennessee new car pre-owned get your ass down there they will find the car for you if they don't have it they'll give you all the incentives that you qualify for and they're going to give you the most for your trade in it's just 30 minutes south of franklin 45 minutes south of nashville all on i-65 so lions ford our travel sponsor, lionsford.net. That will do it for us. And guess what? That has been a football show.